We are in ACO switching from the web interface to the APM performance pathway, the APP. We are planning to use the new Medicare CQMs. Is it required that we use the patient list that Medicare provides as our denominator? Great question, Laura. As you're aware, Medicare introduced the new Medicare CQMs collection type in rulemaking for 2024. The collection type is meant to ease accountable care organization conversion from the web interface to full-on APM reporting, APM performance pathway reporting, the APP. Key to a successful APP submission is identification and deduplication of patients across all practices in your ACO. As part of the Medicare CQM offer, Medicare also offers to give each ACO a list from Medicare data of all patients in the ACO eligible for Medicare CQMs. The list from Medicare will be absolutely correct. It's what I call the gold standard because they naturally hold a complete and deduplicated data set as an essential part of the healthcare payment system through Medicare, the world's biggest insurance company uh, for healthcare, that is. Now, I'm seeing two crucial pieces of misinformation circulating about Medicare CQMs. First, that you have to use Medicare's generated patient lists. You don't. And second, that it includes attributed patients that haven't been seen. It doesn't. A big part of the problem is, un is the unusually vague and misleading provider facing collateral from Medicare on this subject. Over the years, I've watched Medicare dramatically improve the quality and clarity of guidance documents prepared for quality payment program participants. This documentation for Medicare CQMs is not yet up to Medicare's new standards of clarity. You need to have a deep knowledge from a variety of sources to truly understand the Medicare CQM requirements and options. Those important sources, in my estimation, first, Medicare rules. Second, Medicare CQM measure specifications. And third, Medicare's topical guidance document called the 2024 SSP ACO Medicare CQM checklist. Oh, there's a mouthful. Now, first, let's look at those one at a time. First, the rules. In rulemaking annually, the rules end up in the Electronic Code of Feder Federal Regulations at ecfr.gov. This particular topic is addressed at section 425.20 definitions. In the Electronic Code of Federal Regulations, the official home of the historic and current rule set, Medicare CQMs are defined at section 425.20 definitions, beneficiary eligible for Medicare CQMs. The language is dense. I'm not going to read it to you here, but it boils down to two parts. One, Medicare Part B patients who have been seen by an ACO primary care provider in the performance year whether attributed to the ACO or not. Two, Medicare Part B patients who have been attributed to the ACO, whether they have been seen or not. Now, this clearly describes Medicare's intent with Medicare CQMs and taken at full face value suggests that you have to use Medicare's patient list because it's the only source of patients who have been attributed but not seen. That status can only be achieved through prospective alignment by patients who choose your providers as primary but never had a need or desire to see one of your providers. On the face of it, that's an important detail, but it's modified when you consider the next source, the measure specs. In January, Medicare published measure specifications in the usual form and format specifically for the three APP measures, labeling them as specifications for Medicare CQM. Now, the specs are incomplete. Other than labeling each of them as Medicare CQM specs, they are word-for-word -word duplicates of the MIPS CQM specs. I'd like them to mention that the denominator is restricted to Medicare Part B patients. We know that it is from the rules, but it's not, it's not brought out in the specs. The important factor the specs bring in is that the denominator is limited to patients seen at least once during the performance year. This factor in the specifications eliminates the attributed but not seen patients from the calculations. 
which is good news. It's going to lift your scores because you can't have data about patients you haven't seen. And, and we know that in an electronic form of, of uh, submission, that lowers your, uh, uh, your scores. That brings us to the final document. In my search of the QPP resource library, I found one summary document on Medicare CQMs. It's called the 2024 SSP ACO Medicare CQM Checklist. The document fo focuses exclusively on the Medicare provided eligible patient list. To the casual observer, it suggests that you must use Medicare's provided lists. It's only detailed knowledge of the final rule and the Code of Federal Re Regulations and a history with Medicare uh, uh, verbiage that we know otherwise. One word in one sentence is the key in that document. The last sentence of the first paragraph introduces the document as this resource provides steps that ACOs may take, the key word being may, to prepare for and successfully complete quality reporting via the Medicare CQM collection type. It takes some experience with Medicare specs to understand that Medicare takes the words may, should, and shall extremely seriously. May means it's not mandatory. It's something you can use. I think it's a great resource and will provide value and support for the ACO that has given up on electronic reporting and retreated to a manual chart abstraction collection type for the new APP reporting. But there are two reasons the rest of you should not use this resource. First, it's late. Medicare is usually more than a quarter behind with their release of claims, claims relevant data. They pledge to be better with these patient lists, but the complete and final list will not be available until February after the close of the performance year, leaving precious little time to pull a complete submission together using it. Now, it's the best thing to use if you're going to manually abstract charts uh, across your whole organization. If it's a mixed environment, you better use uh, a, a, a more timely data source. And if you're using their list, you better abstract the charts quarterly as these quarterly lists are provided each two months after the end of the quarter so you're not left with little more than the month of March to create your entire submission. Now, though I would describe the Medicare patient list as the gold standard for your eligible patients, it adds more confusion rather than help in the typical project. Now, our favorite place to get denominator data is from claims. And we find that claims are nearly always accessible by even small practices as a byproduct to the claim submission process. We use what's called 837 files, which is your pre-adjudicated claim, what you, what you submit to Medicare before they process it and object to some things and you've cleaned things up. It's the fastest available and it's, it's very accurate. Now, we observe that data sets always vary from each other and patient identification is the key and is the main chore in this. Every data set differs. There's spelling errors. There's formatting differences. No errors, just differences in dealing with uh, the syntax, with the use of maiden versus married name, name changes in marriage and divorce, and other uh, legal name changes. There's variations in dealing with middle names or initials, common use of the middle name instead of the first name, nicknames versus full name, uh, use of, of numbers like the third or, the, uh, or junior or senior and, and those kinds of things. And, and that makes dealing with deduplication tedious and delicate. Medicare's list may be the gold standard, but it, it is from the ground level just one more list that differs from all of the others. So if we think about N equaling the number of claims, claims data systems in your environment, adding the Medicare's list makes, it, makes your complication N plus one. It just adds one more layer of complication that you don't need. It's always more complicated to use Medicare's data when you're getting a, a flow of claims from all of your practices. It's, it's more complicated to use it than to uh, ignore it. In summary, use of Medicare's list creates a tedious need to reconcile their list with each of your member practices and gives you precious little time to do it 
with just one month left in your submission season. Hope this helps. Thanks.